Ocean Speaks How Marie Tharp Revealed the Ocean's Biggest Secret Words by Jess Keating Pictures by Katie Hickey The beach was a blanket faux squishy, soft sand and Marie wanted to feel it under her feet. Shoes off. Socks off. The ocean stretched out before her like a big blue mystery. The waves were talking to her, whooshing up to her toes and sighing away again. Marie loved going into the countryside with her father to search for treasures. She discovered forests and farmhouses, boulders and bird calls, wheat fields and waterfalls. Marie's curiosity was as big as the world she wanted to explore. When she was old enough, Marie wanted to study the earth like her papa. She wanted to be surrounded by rocks and trees, soil and mountains, sunlight and fresh air. But those were jobs for boys, not girls. When Marie was growing up, girls were not supposed to dream of becoming scientists or explorers. Instead she had to take art classes. Marie sketched in her notebook. She learned about stylish outfits, shapes and designs. And she stuck her sculptures together with gum. Marie did not take art for long. Soon, many men went off to fight in a war. With the men away, women were encouraged to learn science. Marie saw her chance. She began studying geology, math, chemistry and physics. There was so much to explore. She discovered geodes and geometry, equations and elements, atoms and antimatter. Marie was so proud when she got her first job in a laboratory in New York. When her male colleagues returned from the war, they were sent on research trips. Marie wished she could go too. They were sailing the Atlantic Ocean using high-frequency sounds to explore the ocean floor. They got to work with the sun on their skin and salt in their hair. But women were considered bad luck on ships. Marie wasn't allowed to join her colleagues. She had to stay behind. Box after box full of depth measurements were sent back to the office. Marie's job was to use the data to create a map of the ocean floor, plotting every point on paper. She knew the ocean and its secrets were inside these boxes. So she set to work. Marie's fingertips became stained with ink. The razor shavings fell to the floor. Her drafting lamp hummed beside her. She had found another way to follow her dream. With her map, she could be an explorer after all. Instead of the vast open ocean, she dove into her tiny cramped office. Instead of crashing waves, she sailed through reams of smooth paper. Instead of clouds, she dreamed of calculations. And instead of the dark, mysterious ocean depths, she swam through bottles of pitch black ink. Marie mapped point after point after point. Inside her small office, Marie's map grew bigger. And bigger. And bigger. Soon, Marie wasn't in her office anymore. She was an explorer on the ocean floor, surrounded by valleys and peaks, mountains and canyons, dips and hills. After weeks of work, Marie looked at her map. Something was wrong. There was a deep rift valley on the floor of the Atlantic Ocean. A long crack with mountainous peaks on both sides. The ocean was talking to Marie again. But what was it telling her? Marie showed the map to her colleague. He yelled. He argued. It must be a mistake, nothing but foolish, silly girl talk. He told Marie to redo her work. 
she knew her map was correct and was eager to prove it. Marie dove into her paper ocean once more. And again the great rift valley appeared. Like a seam on a baseball, the rift circled the earth on the ocean floor. Earth's crust appeared to have moved and shifted apart somehow. Despite her evidence, nobody believed in Marie's work. One man, an explorer named Jacques Cousteau, decided to prove her wrong. He sent his cameras down, down, down. He expected to film an empty ocean floor with no rift valley in sight. He was wrong. Marie's map had revealed the ocean's biggest secret. The rift valley was as real as any valley on land. There were mountains beneath the waves, hidden by the ocean's great depths. Marie had discovered what would soon become the largest known mountain range on our planet. Her map became famous. Because of it scientists started wondering, how did the ocean floor move like this? Was it still moving? What other truths could we learn by studying the hidden depths? Marie's map opened the door for us to better understand our planet. The next time Marie visited the ocean she listened to it whoosh and sigh around her. She felt the sun on her skin and the salt in her hair. And she smiled.